You're welcome back. It's still the run-up. And we're talking right now about the twists and turns following the redesigning of the Naira. Alleged plans by top politicians to organize violent protests against CBN. Conference of Nigerian Political Party's chairman and candidates for the 2023 election slated for February 25 have rejected alleged plans by some people to force the Central Bank of Nigeria to suspend the ongoing Naira redesign policy. The threatened to pull out of the election if the Apex Bank was forced to succumb to pressure and blackmail and suspend the policy. They claim to be in possession of credible security reports which indicated that there is a plot to in instigate violent disturbances to provoke civil unrest aimed at forcing the CBN to postpone the policy. They alleged that the charge was being led by the governors of Kaduna and Kano states, Malam Nasir El Rufai and Dr. Abdullahi Ganduje. They also claimed that Governor Hope Uzodima of Imo State, Governor Bajide Songwolu of Lagos, Governor Nyesom Wike of River State and Rotimia Keredolu of Ondo State were part of the alleged plot. Well, all these are allegations and there are up to at least 14 political parties who have threatened to boycott the election should the Naira redesign policy be put on hold because they believe that it is a plot to rig the election. The political parties said they were backing the policy because it would improve the credibility of the elections. And joining us to discuss the twists and turns of the Naira redesign is Mr. Theophilos Akatuba, a media consultant and a public affairs analyst. Welcome to the program, Mr. Akatuba. Uh, good morning, Yango. Good morning, Nigeria. What a pleasure to be with you in this moment in history. When you talk about pleasure, <laughs> we'll be thinking, do you have the Naira in your pocket? I have not had the Naira for some time until um, an artisan visited me to mm. do something in my house. Yeah. And he told me he had some of the Naira notes with him because he got them uh, queuing for 5 a.m. So I asked him to give them to me. And he generously gave me the first set of 10,000 Naira. That's interesting. And I was happy, I was happy to hold them <laughs> uh, because a lot of people have been seeking after them. Mm. <laughs> yeah, today I was coming to work as early as 5 and I saw the queues in every single ATM I passed on the way to work this morning. Uh, but be that as it may, I'd like to have your perspective. I'd like to have uh, how you feel, know how you feel about the Naira redesign. Well, uh, the first feeling I have is to look at the big picture. Uh, that this step, on increasingly on a daily basis, is getting clearer to me that this is one of the most uh, this, what is one of the best decisions taken to attack uh, all manner of challenges that the country faces. Mm. Uh, the only problem is uh, the timing and the window allowed appear to be short. Mm. So I find because as the day go by, I see friends got, get, get uh, divided by this policy, associates scattered in, into various uh, camps, disagreeing and agreeing. Uh, for me, I, the reasons are used by the central bank, they are so, none of us thought that currency redesign would be able to touch on all aspects and all aspects of the problems that the country is facing. And the loudest protesters are the political class. Uh, and I understand the reason, but a drastic disease calls for a drastic measure. Okay, but uh, some people... Uh like the APC, for instance, the, not the APC, let me not talk about the APC because some people are in support who are still in APC, they are in support of the policy. But the presidential candidate of the APC, for instance, has said the Naira redesign is targeted at him. And some people are also using that as uh, to say that the Naira redesign was targeted, targeted at particular politicians. Do you also <laughs> believe that? Well, the designer of this policy is not targeting a particular politician, but it's like a church when a sermon is being preached and a pastor mentioned the kind of sins that you are involved in. Mm -hmm. 
an unintended part of the sermon. You will take it unto yourself that this pastor must have probably heard of my sin mm. and is targeting me. So for me, uh, Tinubu saying that it can just be like it to the scenario I just painted of a church. Mm. This is a policy for the good of the country. Uh, if any one of us personalize it, that is a target at him, at your ambition, it's most unfortunate because there is no time in this country that a policy will be made or a decision or a law will be made that someone will not feel that this law is designed against uh, him or her. If especially that law is correcting a certain aspect of your operation that is not in the country. Politicians, as you know it, need a lot of money to influence a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what makes them different from the other, if not for the financial power they wield or the network ability to find the money to prosecute their political agenda? Uh, Tinubu or anyone else is not the smartest. They are not the smartest Nigerians. But because they have the, the resource of either the direct of the money or they have the network of men and women who can mobilize these resources. So when he said that, I understood. I am his supporter, and but I do not agree with him that he's targeted at him. I believe that, uh, on the contrary, if you look deeply, if this election is allowed to be held under the current circumstance and he is victorious, it goes to show that his, his, his victory is very legitimate mm. and no one can accuse him of influencing it one way or the other. Mm. Okay, there are some people who said, uh, while the Naira redesign might be a very, very good policy, but the cat was put in front of the horse. Because, for instance, to even do a transfer these days, maybe because the network is jammed or some other reason that might be given, it's very difficult. You send a 5,000, a 10,000, some people have just 2,000 in their account and they want to make a transaction and they send it, they debit them, it doesn't get to the destination and you cannot even make a transaction uh, e-wise, if I might use that. But now the Naira redesign is forcing everybody to do transfers, which is good anyway, cashless policy. But people still feel that we were not prepared, we were not ready for this kind of a policy because we should have done something about the banks and their numerous charges that people are not comfortable with. We should have done something about the networks, which we know that with small pressure, it gets locked. We should have done something about so many other things before we brought a policy like this. Do you also believe that we were not ready for this one? Well, uh, it, is, it is becoming clearer that um, we are inadequately prepared in terms of the uh, infrastructure that's required to support the cashless policy that the country uh, has uh, taken upon itself. Now, if you look at it, it, there are two policies at the same time. So the impact will be twice or thrice as much. Mm. We are redesigning the currency at the same time introducing the cashless in order to combat so many pitfalls. So the two of them impacting at the same time is what is quadrupling and making a trap is very chaotic. If we were just only going to swap the currents and say change old for new, I'm sure it would not be as bad as it is. But we change the currency and at the same time trying to limit cash withdrawal, uh, introduce cash withdrawal limits for all category of persons. So these things that are happening at the same time is too, you know, too drastic for the ordinary Nigerian. But like I said, there is a huge security reason. There are multiple reasons behind the design. Mm. And it is a very drastic step in a country that has such a fragile impact. But we would not have known because the banks themselves have not been very, very truthful about themselves, about their level of readiness. They have always appeared to be excessively ready. They have always declared humongous profits. Even when economy is declared, even during COVID, so a lot of these profits are not properly invested in expansion of their of their infrastructure. But on a daily basis, they keep acquiring new customers. For the first time now, that facility is put to proper pressure and test, and it's falling apart. And so, it, it, we must. This country must seek towards excellence. If you remember. CBN license MTN and Nine Mobile to provide what you call mobile money services, mm. but the banks have continually frustrated and uh, uh, frustrated the effort of the of the, of the telcos to join 
in the money movement where you can move money to any remotest part so long as you have what you call a core signal. Mm. This situation now is opening up that all more channels must be allowed. But for me, uh, because the president is constrained with time, and because a major election that is coming to be tested, you know, in the wake of a new electoral reform, in order for that reform to really be seen to be effective, if you allow politicians to be able to thwart the system, so bringing in the political uh, timetable into the redesign makes it look like we are putting the cart before the horse. But there is a greater good. And if the citizens can just tarry, I believe, we will see that we will have a cleaner election and then we we'll move on to other issues. But it's a tough one. People are stressed. People are unhappy. And so that's what the problem now the country is facing, how to manage all of that and ensure that people have access to the money and their confidence are built. People should do not need to queue. People can easily walk into any ATM, pick 5,000, 10,000, and life just goes on. Unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of pressure and people are really unhappy. Okay, well, uh, finally, let's just wrap up very, uh, very short. Um, just speak to Nigerians because we have, today is the 7th, uh, we have less than 20 days to the general election. With this your optimism, uh, let's see you infect, as it were, the Nigerian populace so that the needful can be done on the 25th of February. But, but let me say this, a lot, uh, just before you, you, I, you, you, I, I leave, I want to say that if you look at, this is the first time I have seen politicians fight a policy that they themselves or the government they belong to have formed, uh, uh, has introduced. It gives me confidence that this policy is good. I understand the cry. I thought the governors should be talking of how money can get to their remotest part instead of flogging down the policy. When the announcement was made, I thought governors and senators would be busy making effort to ensure that CBN provides outlets in their rural communities. A lot of them thought that it was a big joke and it was not going to work. And they just waited on to see how the policy would not work. All of a sudden, they saw the result. And the next thing they did is to unleash all their food soldiers all over the media, you know, to, 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 to demonize the CBN governor. And when they couldn't succeed, they had to start, they, they started separating the president from their rank and file and say that the president is the wicked one. For the first time, we begin to hear that the president is the only single man that takes a lot of decisions against the popular decision. I see an orchestrated design. People are saying they will unleash terror. Yes, I cannot, I believe that in the weeks to come, there will be a lot of crisis in this country unless we step up and we speak to the citizens themselves so that they are not used okay. by the people who feel affected. All right. My final take is anyone who wants to win election in Nigeria should win it clean, fairly, so that his government is legitimate. Yeah. It helps the country to make progress. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, everybody who wins an election must have deserved it you know it's a very good thing to say thank you so much mr akachuba for always coming through and being a part of this program today i'm always at your service because you are a, you are a very unique individual thank yes. you so much thank you okay. okay we've been talking with mr theophilus akachuba a media consultant but i might also mention that is also uh an APC member, or if not an APC member, at least a, um, a chieftain in the campaign thrill of uh, uh, the Deputy Senate Leader, Omo Agege. Uh, so he is in support of the Naira. So it's not everybody APC, or not every politician, not everybody who is Nigerian that is against it. Wherever you stand, let us be patient enough because it's always darkest before dawn. Let's hope that the dawn of Nigeria is coming tomorrow. We'll take this break for the news. Stay with us.